Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Monsters Manifested, right here on DM Tools with Max McCool. On today's episode, we're going to be continuing our trek through the Devil Monster type with the Ice Devil. So, let's jump right into it. The Ice Devil stat block can be found on page 75 of the Monster Manual, and its lore can be found on page 69. So, let's begin there. Ice Devil also known as Gelugon. Found most commonly on the cold layers of Stygia and Cania, Ice Devils serve as commanders of the infernal armies of the Nine Hells, tormenting lesser devils as an outlet for their anger and resentment. Coveting the power of their pit fiend superiors, Ice Devils work ceaselessly towards promotion, slaughtering the enemies of the Nine Hells and claiming as many souls as they can for their archdevil masters. Resembling a giant bipedal insect, an ice devil has clawed hands and feet, powerful mandibles, and a long tail covered in razor-sharp spikes. Some carry barbed spears, whose icy touch can render a foe all but helpless in combat. And that's all we got when it comes to the lore of the ice devil. Fairly straightforward, once again, but useful, I think. Good to know that they are relentless in their pursuit of appreciation and promotion through their devilish deeds, let's say. But before we go much further, let's move on to the stat block, shall we? The Ice Devil is a large fiend, devil, with a lawful evil alignment. It has an armor class of 18, which is natural armor. It has hit points that average 180, or 19d10 plus 76, and it has a movement speed of 40 feet. The Ice Devil has a strength of 21, a dexterity of 14, a constitution of 18, an intelligence of 18, a wisdom of 15, and a charisma of 18. The Ice Devil saving throws include dexterity plus 7, constitution plus 9, wisdom plus 7, and charisma plus 9. It is resistant to the damage types of bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non-magical weapons that aren't silvered. It is also immune to the damage types of cold, fire, and poison, as well as immune to the poisoned condition. The Ice Devil has the senses of blindsight for 60 feet, dark vision for 120 feet, and passive perception of 12. It speaks the languages of Infernal and Telepathy for 120 feet, and is a challenge rating of 14. On to the abilities. Devil's Sight. Magical darkness does not impede the devil's dark vision. And magic resistance. The devil has advantage on saving throws against spells and other magical effects. On to the actions. Multi-attack. The devil makes three attacks. One with its bite, one with its claws, and one with its tail. Bite. Is a melee weapon attack with a plus ten to hit, a reach of five feet on one target. On a hit, it does an average of 12, or 2d6 plus 5 piercing damage, plus an average of 10, or 3d6 cold damage. Claws. Also a melee weapon attack, with a plus 10 to hit, a reach of 5 feet on one target. On a hit, it does an average of 10, or 2d4 plus 5 slashing damage, plus an average of 10, or 3d6 cold damage. Tail. Also a melee weapon attack, with a plus 10 to hit, a reach of 10 feet on one target. On a hit, it does an average of 12, or 2d6 plus 5 bludgeoning damage, plus an average of 10, or 3d6 cold damage. And finally, Wall of Ice, which recharges on a roll of 6. The devil magically forms an opaque wall of ice on a solid surface it can see within 60 feet of it. The wall is 1 foot thick and up to 30 feet long and 10 feet high, or it's a hemispherical dome up to 20 feet in diameter. When the wall appears, each creature in its space is pushed out of it by the shortest route. The creature chooses which side of the wall to end up on, unless the creature is incapacitated. The creature then makes a DC 17 dexterity saving throw, taking an average of 35 or 10d6 cold damage on a failed save, or half as much damage on a successful one. 
The wall lasts for one minute or until the devil is incapacitated or dies. The wall can be damaged and breached. Each 10-foot section has an AC of 5, 30 hit points, vulnerability to fire damage, and immunity to acid, cold, necrotic, poison, and psychic damage. If a section is destroyed, it leaves behind a sheet of frigid air in the space the wall occupied. Whenever a creature finishes moving through the frigid air on a turn, willingly or otherwise, the creature must make a DC-17 constitution saving throw, taking an average of 17 or 5d6 cold damage on a failed save, or half as much damage on a successful one. The frigid air dissipates when the rest of the wall vanishes. And that's all there is when it comes to the standard form stats of the Ice Devil. There's quite a bit there to chew on as it is, but there is also a variant stat for the Ice Devil in which they can wield a spear, as mentioned earlier on in the lore. So I'm going to read that out for you and see what difference there is. Variant Ice Devil Spear Some Ice Devils have the following action options. Multi-attack. The devil makes two attacks, one with its spear and one with its tail. Ice Spear is a melee weapon attack with a plus 10 to hit, a reach of 10 feet on one target. On a hit, it does an average of 14 or 2d8 plus 5 piercing damage, plus an average of 10 or 3d6 cold damage. If the target is a creature, it must succeed on a DC 15 constitution saving throw, or for one minute, its speed is reduced by 10 feet. It can take either an action or a bonus action on each of its turns, not both, and it can't take reactions. The target can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turns, ending the effect on itself on a success. And that's everything covered for the Ice Devil. So as I had mentioned, there's quite a bit there to chew on, but I think that with the actions that the Ice Devil has, particularly that Wall of Ice ability, or action rather, that can present us with some potential for an interesting interaction or revelation even, if you would. So, without further ado, let's jump into some adventure crafting, shall we? Okay, so, the first idea that came to my mind when coming up with something for an adventure was utilizing the last ability, or action rather, of the Ice Devil with its Wall of Ice, because that seems quite unique, and an image popped into my head, or a thought popped into my head right away of a town or a settlement of some sort, perhaps even further north, or where it's kind of tundra, perpetual winter, or it's always cold, maybe. And what happens is, is that every once in a while, there's these hemispherical, these domes of ice that just happen to appear, perhaps in the town, in the settlement itself, maybe on the outskirts of the settlement. But effectively, what happens is, as individuals are traversing through the town or the settlement, or perhaps as merchants or traders are making their way down the road into the settlement or towards the settlement, suddenly this dome of ice just appears seemingly out of nowhere, and they're trapped in there for that single minute. And then as that hemisphere disappears, what's left is nothing but these sort of crumpled up bodies of the individuals that were alive just moments ago, right? Or just a moment ago. And I think that could lead to some intrigue for your players at the table, and you could present it as a rumor from one town over or another region about this area of the continent or the country or wherever they are that just happens to have this strange anomalous activity or occurrence that takes place where as of recently or perhaps cyclically once a year at the threshold the cusp of winter from fall or something like that there's this anomalous occurrence of these domes of ice that appear and manage to somehow kill the individuals that find themselves trapped within them and you could then generate something like a mystery to be solved in that regard where 
Nobody in the area really knows why this takes place. Perhaps the people don't even see the ice devil itself. You know, maybe it reveals itself momentarily just to the individuals that it has selected to be its victims. It constructs the dome or summons the dome of ice, then murders the people within, and then takes their souls or whatever it wants. And then as the dome disappears, the ice devil escapes and so nobody really knows what's going on. And you can allow your players to investigate those situations and see maybe there's some evidence left on the individuals. Perhaps the town doesn't have a medic or someone who is well versed in medicine and healing. And so what they think is that perhaps the dome freezes out the individuals very quickly, like a deep freeze would. Perhaps they think that all it takes is a minute for all of the oxygen to be depleted from that encased dome. And so individuals can't quite survive. So maybe you have it, people or residents that are paranoid. And so they decide to try to take a different route to and from home to maybe their workplace or to their shop where they sell their wares, because they think that during this time of year or this seasonal change, or again, if this is just sort of a more recent occurrence, they just try to test their luck and change up their path because the environment around them has become something like a minefield, if you would. Meanwhile, it's all being perpetrated by this ice devil. And so you could implement things that I think could be quite odd of like maybe husks, you know, because the ice devil is this insectoid creature. Perhaps it sheds a husk of its tail or maybe a chunk of it came off or fell off while it was battling a merchant. Maybe the merchant had a mercenary guard that tried to defend themselves and the merchant from the ice devil, but the ice devil eventually overcame them. You know, you could have your players realize that it looks like these victims had been in a form of combat rather than just had died out, had been frozen out or died of hypothermia or suffocation, stuff of that nature, which they could then investigate further and come into contact eventually with this ice devil. And you could play on that. You could even take it a little further where perhaps the ice devil is in the area it's in because it is the servant to an arch devil or a greater devil like a pit fiend, something like that who has made a deal perhaps with a sinister individual in that town or maybe even of a neighboring town, right? So perhaps you have, let's say just for example, up in this sort of boreal tundra-esque part of your world, you have these two towns and one is a, let's say a mining town and the other is a lumber town. But perhaps the mining town is in dire straits now because the miners, the company, what have you, they have depleted the resources from the earth, right? Perhaps the, the chilled mountainside, the frozen cliff face has been depleted of its minerals. So they're now losing value. So they have to find another means of trade or business or another resource. And the only other readily available resource are these grand boreal trees or these trees that grow in boreal areas, but they can't really access them to cut them down and generate lumber to sell because this neighboring town, this rival settlement has the access or the permission or what have you has the claim staked for lumber in that area. And so you could have perhaps a desperate business owner or mining operation owner come into dire straits and feel as though they have no other choice. So they have this ritual or they summon a devil by one way or the other, perhaps even in their desperation, they just begged for some assistance and the person or the entity that appeared was a devil who made a deal with them and said, I can deal with this rival town and you can have your wealth from the resources. If you sign off and give me your soul and allow me to do what I will to the other town in order so that you may prosper. And they agree to it. And so now, because there's a deal made, the 
greater devil has assigned the ice devil to cause havoc and torment and chaos in this neighboring town. And so you can develop this sort of instance where your players have to investigate not only one town and what's going on there with these domes of ice coming up and killing the people within and figuring out what's happening there and stopping the monster from taking out these innocent victims, but they also have to figure out what's at the root or what's at the cause if they're so interested to. And you have another town or another settlement, another individual that they have to interact with and confront and perhaps put some clues together, perhaps have some word of mouth, some rumors sent their way. Perhaps they have to go to the other town or they're intrigued to go to the other town and see if it's taking place there in that area. You know, they could map out perhaps a radius of where these occurrences seem to take place and realize that for some reason this settlement is targeted, but the settlement to the west or to the east is untouched, right? And try to figure out what's happening there and why. Another way that I think you could utilize a nice devil that might be a little different and perhaps a little more straightforward, not as involved, let's say, or lore heavy or investigatory, right? If you wanted to just drag and drop the monster into your game or into your setting for your players to encounter, I think could be done effectively in a way of like a safari or a large game hunt, if you would. So you could have an NPC perhaps that's this notorious game hunter that seeks out unique monsters, perhaps creatures that are rare, perhaps even creatures and monsters that are things of myth and legend only, or so it's assumed. And the last communication or clue or hint that they got was that of a monstrous insectoid beast that resides in cold areas of the land. And so the hunter offers your players a contract or a deal to seek out this monster in order to capture it, perhaps kill it, to hunt it effectively. Perhaps they want the head of the monster on a plaque mounted on their wall in their collection room, stuff of that nature. And so the players now have to seek out this monster and take it out, but come to this strange realization or come to see that this monster is more intelligent than initially thought or rumored to be, that this sort of Bigfoot, if you would, this Arctic Bigfoot or Yeti is really a devil that has an objective, has a mission to complete and is present only because it is trying to fulfill that mission to get in the good graces of a greater devil in an attempt for promotion to a higher ranking. You could also utilize something like a thinness in the veil or perhaps in the weave between the planes, and so the ice devil can traverse back and forth between Stygia and Cania and the material plane up here where it is thinnest, perhaps at the poles of your planet, if you would. And you can basically create a scenario where this big game hunter and your players have sort of walked into more than they bargained for in the way of the ice devil. You could also utilize that in another way rather than a simple game hunter, let's say, who's seeking out a trophy or a prize. Perhaps you have an individual who's seeking out the husks of this monster, the carapace, if you would the chitin that is on the body of this monster in order to create perhaps a weapon or some armor. It could be that you have a blacksmith or some sort of armor smith or trades person that seeks out this material because it's hardy, it's rare, and they can develop useful armor for combat or traversal because it deals well with exposure to the elements, to the cold, to the wind, to the ice, to the snow, stuff like that. You could even implement an object of power or a weapon of power in the spear of the ice devil. Perhaps the individual is seeking out the spear because it would be a powerful weapon or tool to have in their armory or in their toolbox. And so the players have to seek out this creature in order to cut it down perhaps collect its carapace and this weapon of great power in the meantime. All in all, though, I think the Ice Devil is a pretty cool monster. It's interesting for sure. You would not think of the monster that you see when you think of an Ice Devil. 
I think most people's knee jerk response or thought or the image that would pop into their heads is your typical devil, like a horned individual with a trident and a pointy tail. But instead of them being red, they're blue or white or something like that. But the ice devil really does look like this strange, monstrous insect kind of beetle praying mantis type thing. It's very, very cool and not something at all that you would think of, or at least I wouldn't immediately think of when thinking of something deemed to be a devil. But I think that does allow for a lot of play here when it comes to utilizing them for adventures in ways that we could drop them in and give our players one thing or make our players think that they're encountering a strange insectoid monster or even something like a thrycreen or something like that. And they might think or come to the conclusion of like, oh, this is those insectoid creatures we heard about when in fact it's really not. It's this devilish entity designed to basically just cut you down and hopefully get good enough in the graces of an archdevil in order to be brought further or promoted higher up in the ranking. So all in all, a, quite a unique monster. And I actually, I dig it quite a bit. I like how it looks. I think it could be used in a variety of ways. But that's all I got for you fine folks today when it comes to the Ice Devil and how you can utilize it in some different ways for an adventure or a scenario at your next session or for the players at your table. On the next episode of Monsters Manifested, we're going to be covering the Imp, which is going to be a bit of a different process, I think. I think we're going to be better off trying to tailor this devil for earlier sessions or earlier levels, as it seems to be quite diminutive, let's say. But until then, I'd like to thank you all very much for tuning in. I highly appreciate it. Please feel free to follow the podcast, rate the podcast, leave a review or a comment wherever you can, if you'd like, as it would help out a lot, and I would highly appreciate it. If you're listening to this episode of Monsters Manifested on YouTube, I would kindly ask that you like and comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all that fun stuff, all those magic buttons that do great things apparently, as it would help me out, help the podcast out, help the channel out, help everything grow, give it some more visibility, get it to the eyes of more people that may need some assistance in developing ideas for adventures for their party or any new dungeon masters or game masters that might not know where they can begin or how to start developing an adventure and perhaps it could offer some insight or inspiration to them on their journey. But with all that said and done, thank you all once again very much for tuning in. I'm Max McCool and I'll see you on the next one. Have a good day everyone.